it's just, uh, it's just uh, I'm too tired to think <laughs> something <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> it's the work, but we can't get to it right now. Yes. <laughs> so, your view probably different resident last time you came, right? Yes, it's been a while since I've been here. Hey. Oops. Oh shoot. Okay. Sorry. We switch like every year. Yeah. It's like a resident. Yes. Have a seat. Okay. And we don't have too much time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we have until like 10 45. Yeah. We'll use the last 10 minutes for me to go and talk to my boss okay. and you know, discuss things. You can give me that paper. Thank you so much. And I've read through your chart and I have a general sense about what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to hear it from you. Uh -huh. How are things? Everything's okay. So it's, I don't know if you read in my history, I still have this freaking cycle from overseas still electronically harassing me. And he won't stop. So, you know, um, I'm always too busy to keep up with him stuff because... It's electronic harassment. I get multiple spam emails from this guy. And, you know, all he knows is his internet track, uh, hacking, um, internet skills. He's abusing the internet. This, this is like a, per a person that used to be your partner? or He, I never met this guy. Okay, so this is just a, a random person. Yeah. And anyway, um, that's just one of my stressors. I'm, like I said, I have a $500 car payment and um, I was too busy to keep up with his stuff. And it's happening every day since 2016. Mm -hmm. And so like whenever I do get my car payments, um, the money made up to make my, my necessary payment for the month. After that, I'm going to go file a restraining order and try to see if I can get this guy caught because he's out of control and doesn't want to stop harassing me. Um, he uses... he uses sex as the weapon because just because I don't want to have sex with this guy he is very vindictive it will turn around and just keep harassing me mm. and he won't stop and that, that sounds really scary it's really freaking frustrating it, it triggers my anger every single day but you know and I, I want to I wanna know more about that this one I can't help but notice you have your phone out oh yeah <laughs> But anyway, yeah, other than that, that's just my biggest stressor. Any, everything else is going good. My my dad is doing good, which is my main motivator. Um, Your who is doing good? My dad. Your dad? Yeah. Because, like, I have um, social phobia anxiety. I don't have too much friends. I don't have no friends at all. I don't trust nobody oh. because I've just been, like, really, really... A lot of bad people entered my life and hurt me really bad. So all through the years, I kind of distrust anybody. So I don't really have anybody in my circle except for my family. And that's just my main, uh, my family is just my main uh, people that, you know, that keep me going and stuff. Especially my dad. My dad's my number one best friend in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And I almost lost him in March because he, had, he caught sepsis, but he survived. So when my dad was in that um, time where he was in the hospital, I have a temporary uh, mental crisis. Um, I broke down. Um, I temporarily lost it because if my dad was to go, I would not be able to survive. It would be too, too much on my mental. And, but he's doing good. He's doing real good. Um, he survived. My family's doing good. I'm doing good. Um, you know, I have my two cats that are with me. And uh, those are like my, my children and stuff. So it's just me and my two cats. And that's good enough for me to be like a, like a solitude family. So it's just me and my two cats. And that's just my little family right there. But other than that, my real family is doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm working. I'm getting up to go move. If I could just put a little bit of effort of eating right and get a little bit of exercise, everything would go good. But um, other than that, everything is good. Um, 
only thing I would say is that when you do prescribe me the circle, like with the 300 milligram tablets, like the, the, the big um, pills, those are very strong for me whenever I do get like a new, um, a new refill. So like those uh, medications at 300 milligrams, it's like way severely too strong. And it feels like I'm gonna die, like when I take it. So you guys uh, prescribed me um, um, the, I think the 100 milligrams, the little 100 milligram tablets. I take three of those to make up for that 300 tablet and it makes me feel okay, it makes me feel normal. Which, but which tablet? The Seracol, the 100 milligrams. Uh -huh. Those ones make me feel okay, but if I have like the, the one extreme big dose of the 300 milligram caps, it feels like I'm going to die. It feels like I'll, I'll be like frozen in bed and my heart will be like racing. That, and it just feels like I'm just going to die because it's, oh no. it's way too strong. That, that, that sounds really scary. Yeah. Uh, it, so that's the circle 400 does that. But or the 300, the 300. The 300. Yeah. So, so... So you have, have you not been taking the Seracol? I have been taking the Seracol, but I have the 100 milligrams. And I take three of those and that does me good. But if I, if I start a new prescription of the full tablet, it, it'll... Um, so, oh, so you, so you take 100 milligram tablets, you take three of those, uh -huh. and that, you, you feel better when you do that instead of like taking like one, three. Yeah. Okay, so you've been taking three 100 milligram tablets. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And that you feel better on that. Yeah. Cool. So... There's that, but like whenever you guys do um, prescribe me the 300 milligrams, I'll take it and I'll get that like really intense feeling, but like I'll get immune to it and I'll get used to it and then thereafter it'll feel normal. But like it feels like whenever I get a new batch and it has my body has to get too immune to it and then there's like a certain point I get used to it and then after that. But like whenever I do take the first dose of that medication, it's just like way too strong and my body gets used to it. So I'd rather take the uh, 100 milligrams and three uh, pills for one dose. Do you know what I'm talking about and making any sense? Yes, I, I, I hear you. Um, it, so it, it's interesting because it's still the same dose. It right? is. But you, yeah. you take it is different. So that's fine. Um, I can't um, kind of help but notice that you, you sound a little bit... Um, Distressed. Yeah. Yeah. Not the guy from Finland. That's like my main stressor. Okay. W w I mean, how are you handling that? I've been telling you, mental health, nobody wants to help me. I called the FBI, I made police reports. Um, I also, like I said, I called the district courts and they told me I need to file a restraining order and this guy's overseas. And so this is, a, this is a person in Finland? Yes. Who reaches out to you? Through... Uh, Email through social media, and uh, he has IT skills through hacking, uh -huh. and you know just a bunch of just a bunch of blackmail, just threatening me, taunting me, provoking me, harassing me, instigating. I guess so. This guy's just like like he's he's borderline and he's a severe alcoholic, and he does not take no for an answer. So he's an online sexual predator stalking on women. So I've been stalked by this guy for about six years. Oh no. Yeah. And you said you spoke to the FBI? I spoke to the FBI and they don't want to do any about it, anything about it. I made a couple of police reports about it. They're all, we can't do any, but anything about it. All we can do is just write a statement saying that you, that you making this report. Did, did, did things get worse recently? Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, this guy says out of the wall. He thinks it's my my email is a uh, an outlet to to abuse me somehow, to get a to get a, be in a vindictive way to get back at me just because I don't want to be friends with this guy. Does he threat? Like, are you genuinely afraid for your like safety? Um. Yeah, because like I know he can't really do anything to me because he's overseas, but. The anger and the frustration, the distress, the the freaking anguish, the animosity. I mean, it's just a lot of built up anger. And the only way I could express it is just through, he's like, 
I mean, I don't know what to. So a lot of emo, like emotion. Very fears, negative like, emotion. Okay, but in terms of actually thinking that you might physically be hurt by this person, is that? Well, he can't do anything to me. Okay. I mean, so if that's, he, that's not a. Yeah. I'm not concerned about that. I mean, if he really did come over here, I mean, this guy's stupid. He doesn't even have the money to to even come over here to the U.S. because he's so stupid and drunk and he's so lazy and he doesn't want to get off his lazy ass and get a job. Uh, to distract himself to leave me alone. Uh, so he sounds like a really negative, a very like, negative like, person. Predatory, like person. Yeah, I even feel like I uh, like like I was mentioning about my dad. I even think he threw a freaking curse at me. Who? Because this person? yeah, this, because like it was really strange. My dad got sick all of a sudden. He almost passed, and then maybe like two or three weeks later, he had a terrible accident where he fell and his my dad's skin's like really really thin. And he fell on his knee and freaking blew off his whole knee. I mean, it felt like this guy threw a curse. I don't know if you believe in that, but I, I'm like truly a believer. This guy's a real, this, this guy, Mika Jala from Finland, he's a really, really bad guy. He's really, really bad. And then even one time a female even came up to me telling me that he was known to be a bad guy in his village. That, that um, this girl told me that she was sexually assaulted by Mika. And she was telling me that... Um, this is on social media. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, he's he's known to be very dysfunctional and just, uh, just very bad. I mean, like, I don't know why he puts so much energy into, like, trying to harass me and stop women. Because this guy is such a low-life loser. Nobody wants to be with him because he's a drunk mess. So, okay, so that's... It's interesting that you say that. I want to kind of hone in on it. So, it sounds like... This person is, is a loser, he's a drunk man, he's, he's, he's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, he can't physically hurt you, but he can really distress you emotionally. Spiritually, right? emotionally. Okay. So maybe that's what we should focus on, right? Like how you risk, like how these things affect you psychologically, right? Mm -hmm. Psychological it, abuse. Right. That's what he does. So yeah. it's like so it's like how can we put up like a kind of like stronger walls that he can't get through with it. Like, um, like I said, I gotta go make work and go make my car payment and then after that I got all of the time and stuff because like I said, I'm always constantly busy and this guy's just like a freaking loser. He acts so childish and and uh, just because um, he has the ability to to play his tricks on, on the internet and stuff, um, you know, this guy's out of control. He needs to be put in his place by the cops telling him that he needs to stop harassing me like like i mean i've been telling my doctors and stuff but like my doctors just kind of brush it off like okay well, well we'll just write that down well, in your what chart. we can do right is can't can't necessarily stop this person from, from doing but it's going to be some kind of can, legal we can we can help the way that you react and like how these things affect you right mm -hmm. um so i mean in particular i'm thinking about like it sounds to me like you might benefit from talking to someone like a therapist yes i you know what i've, I've been asking for a therapist and they told me about some kind of therapy help and they called me and they went to my house to get a signature and i never heard back from them i was like okay well look i'll give you i'll give you some information we have a clinic here so you can walk in literally like tomorrow next couple of days okay? okay um how are you sleeping um like i said those medications circle they put me into a really really good deep sleep and like whenever i am sleeping um i am dead to the world i mean if there was like a freaking bomb outside and i was asleep i wouldn't be be able to hear it uh it puts me in a really good deep sleep i'm getting my full eight hours and it feels like my mind is energized my body has the energy to do what i need to do but if I don't take my medication, my Seroquel, I won't sleep for like two or three days and my freak, and I get oh, no. so dizzy and I start hearing and I start seeing stuff and and uh, sometimes whenever I don't take my medication, I have severely haunting thoughts like so freaking scary, I'm so, excuse me, uh, so scary that like my body just freezes and it's just like, like a ball of energy in my stomach is just like so, like a, 
really, really scary, terrorizing feeling. Did that and happen recently? No, that's whenever I don't take my medication. Okay, so for the past, like, maybe month or so, that happened at all? No, my okay. medication has been keeping everything under control. Good, good. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, not hearing or seeing anything recently? No, no. Any other than, like, this, you know, situation with this, with this finger to the person, anything going on that's bothering you? No, no, just that, just my main stress from Finland, but everything else is going good. Like my dad's doing good, my family's doing good, Wonderful. my cats are, are, you know, me and my little cat family, that's what keeps me going and stuff. And Like I said, I have social phobia anxiety, like my mental illness is so severe that I get like, I feel like this small, like when I'm in a big crowd. Because it feels like everything is zeroing, zeroing on me and I get like so scared and paranoid, like mm -hmm. I feel like they're manipulating me and they're like trying to... Do you ever feel that people can read your thoughts? Um, sometimes, sometimes, uh -huh. sometimes, um, I don't know if you believe in it, but sometimes, um, I wear, like, protection amulets for, like, protection, like, like, um, like, uh, um, healing energies through stones and stuff, like, protection stones, and, I don't know, I don't know if you, like, really... You feel that that helps you feel more? Yeah, a little bit, like, a little, if it, it kind of feels like, like, a, I have a, like, a protection shield, like, Sometimes whenever um, I feel, I don't know, this just doesn't make sense, but like kind of like witchcraft kind of, like protection kind of stuff, like my spirituality. Uh -huh. But yeah, I think everything is going okay and stuff. Just sometimes like people can be positive, but I get a lot of jealousy and envy because I don't have my makeup and but when I'm dressed up and stuff, a lot of people is just like zero on me and start like, picking on me like on envy making negative comments and stuff and so that's the reason why i got social anxiety because like whenever i'm in crowds like that it feels like a lot of talking manipulation is just like trying to put me down in a negative way and but i mean i guess you that's have, just mental you some, illness you have some positive people around you my family and yeah. my cats okay good so yeah people that you feel you're accepted around yeah okay. so those definitely i'm glad to hear that um Tell me about, um, like, any kind of maybe thoughts about wanting to hurt someone or... I want to hurt that. If I had a chance, I would definitely... I, I'm honestly, brutally being honest and blunt. If I had a chance, I would go over there to Finland and go kill this guy. I would seriously go kill this guy because that would give me the satisfaction to all the stress he's cost me over the years. But I won't do it. I'm not freaking motivated to go out there and kill him. But if I had a chance, I would. But, you know, he's overseas. He can't hurt me physically. I mean, the only thing he can do is just throw stones at me and just hurt me mentally. But physically than that, that's like really my main stressor. I would go hurt this guy, but, you know, I'm not going to go waste my time and energy. I mean, I got too much... Too much, uh, you know, I got too much pride to even go do that because, you know, I mean, if he's just ignoring him, I mean, that's the best thing I can do for myself is just to ignore him, but it just pisses me off, though. I mean, like, I don't understand why this guy acts this way. It's just really retarded. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, no, I don't know. I don't have no, uh, I don't know. I don't have no feelings on hurting anybody. Do you, do you know how he looks like? Yeah, I have pictures of him. Okay. And let's kind of think about that so what you wouldn't you wouldn't you, you said that you you feel like you want to kill him because yeah. of all the stuff that he like all the pain that he's causing but you were saying maybe i shouldn't or what what would stop i mean from, because any, any thoughts on like what that because i'm not that psycho i mean i wouldn't i mean if it was right here i'd probably do it but i'm not gonna go waste my time and energy and waste my money and and especially all this this COVID stuff and stuff, you know, you don't do. I don't want to go out there. And Can you think of like like maybe some consequences? Of yeah, I mean, killing yeah, I mean, I mean, if you go out and kill somebody, of course you're gonna have the negative consequences of facing years in jail. And I'm not that type of person, you know. I'm like, I, I have better common sense than that. I, uh -huh. I mean, like whenever I'm out on the streets, I always try to be positive and. Try to be nice to everybody, but you know what? There are some really evil people in this world. You know, it's just going to be really careful in who you meet. Uh -huh. 
What do you What do you do to make yourself feel comfortable? Like um, I like I don't know. I like to watch my TV. I got like my news to watch. I like to watch news. Um, my cats. I love my cats so much. They keep me going. Um, internet, YouTube, um, social media sometimes. Um, a lot of arts and crafts. I like arts and crafts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, just hobbies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, and smoking weed. I love smoking my weed. <laughs> I'll be honest with that. I got the card and everything too. Do you, do you ever feel like? I feel like my weed, if I don't have my weed, I won't be able to do anything. I feel like I'm dead and I'll just stay in bed. But if I have my THC, it gets me motivated. I, I drink my caffeine of, I don't know if you know, that Venom energy drinks. I have one of those and, and my smoke and that's what keeps me going all day. I see. Okay. Lorna, I'm going to have to go and talk to my attending psychiatrist. He's going to have too much time. Okay. Is there anything that you want me to focus on today? Um, yeah, um, I have not been checked for blood work. Uh -huh. I need blood work. The last time that I was here, I don't remember. Like I said, my medication is too strong for it's me to get while, up. Yeah. So I made myself come today because I don't want to be discharged. I need you guys' help still. Sorry, and you need what, sorry? Need your help. Would you know, you? just, you know, through my medication. I just need my prescriptions and blood work, and that's it. Okay. I'm thinking about... Maybe, um, so we, we'll do the blood work for sure. Yeah, okay? for sure. Like we need to get the sugars and the cholesterol and check that. Yes, out. yes. Uh, I know I need to lose a little bit of weight, but you know, I just got to make a little effort to get, uh, go but it, it, we Usually we, we do that, uh, you, you have to be fasting, like not, not that Yeah, fast. I haven't eaten today, so. Eaten today? No, so I'm probably going to go over there real quick. Okay, good. So we can do that after this appointment. The other thing I'm thinking about is... So I'll give you like resources for psychotherapy. Yes. So you can come here and kind of talk about. Some yeah, of because things. it would. I mean, just to get all that built up energy, just to get it yeah. out, and it'll release it, and I'll feel so much better. Yeah. Sometimes I, I do need somebody to talk to. And I know you mentioned that the circle of three hundred is like too much, right? On the other hand, this is a medication that I think could be helpful in making you feel less disrupted by mm -hmm. all of this experience and from the last note i see that dr sanchez increased the dose to 400 mm -hmm. but it sounds like you were taking just 300. do you think you can take 400 so like another tap and the little yellow ones the, the 100 mile ones mm -hmm. i might be able to try it yeah but if you can dose me in the little yellow tabs it'll be a lot easier on me because like cool. i said those one huge dose yeah it, feels like I'm literally gonna die in bed. Okay, we can we can do that and we can even like, you, you can even take it like in the morning, you know? Mm -hmm. Not even like at, at bed. So you can take like one of those little yellow tabs in the morning and then the three uh, at night. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And I'll go right now and talk to my um, attending psychiatrist and mm -hmm. see if he's finalized this. So you didn't have breakfast today? No. It's like I don't have an appetite in the morning. And then I'll, I'll usually eat, eat at night and then go to sleep. That's where all my weight gain is at. Uh -huh. But like I don't have anything. I don't have an appetite in the morning. And I'll eat like in the afternoon or at night. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you where you can get the blood draw. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I know where there are. You can go into those little... Um, the little U and M clinics. I'm gonna to go to the one on University. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Where, I know. Where you can at. totally do that. And okay. you, you can even go to like there's one um, right next to our clinic. Okay. If you prefer to that or okay. going to uh, University. Uh, Terry, you mentioned you mentioned that you work. Yeah, DoorDash. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, very good. How's it's a very good you? job. Good. Good. Because um. 
Like I said, DoorDash, like I have my anxiety, my social anxiety. Uh -huh. I mean, if you were to put me behind the counter for eight hours, I will not be able to do that because there's always people in and out. And many, many, multi many personalities at once. And you get your bad people and you get your good people. And usually on the negative scale, that's when the bad people, like, because some people think they own you over a pack of cigarettes when you're behind the counter. So I wouldn't be able to handle that kind of job. But with DoorDash, um, all I do is just drive around, go pick up my order, take it off, and so there's less people interaction, so it's like the perfect job for me. Right on. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yep. Okay, let me go and talk to Dr. Amico. Okay. And we'll come back and touch base, okay? Okay. Is this water right here? Do you want some water? Yeah, please. Okay, nice. Okay. I'll tell you how to dry here. I'm mask. <laughs> Can't wait for all this last stuff for it to be gone. I hear Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, you can just, you know how to use Okay, it. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help.